Good morning, sir. Good morning, Chief. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Yeah, great. So last week, we started a topic on how to plan for your retirement, yes. okay, with real estate. If you missed that episode, I will encourage you to go to the Web TV uh, YouTube page and go uh, enjoy yourself after this session. Now, we discussed certain things last week about why property is probably one of the best you know, asset With, class yes. you want to use to plan for your retirement. We discussed that last week and we explained the reasons. This week, I'll be talking about how you can then go ahead to do that. Okay. Now, one in planning for retirement, what really one is planning for is to be able to cover the basic needs of life. Sure. Because at that time, you are not really so particular about some other needs anymore. Mm. Once, if your basic needs can be met, you are good, you know? And the basic needs, food. Health at that age. Well, yeah, food, clothing, shelter, health. Yeah, health. Now, in the health, of course, we know how you should plan for your health, probably get a health insurance uh, scheme and all of that, mm. you know? But you see, that means that one of the things you would need at retirement is shelter. Sure. No doubt about that. Sure. And at retirement, you are not going to continually earn money mm. like that. It's not big money anymore. You can of be earning your retirement. Better. So, this is why I say that it's better for you to have a property before you retire. A property that you are living in or that is responsible for the rent of wherever you want to live. Hmm. Meaning that you can have a property in Lagos and be staying in Ibadan. Do you understand? But your tenants in Lagos are paying you rent to and that is what you are using to fund, fund the your Ibadan stay house. in Ibadan. Hmm. It's very important because if you should take housing, it's a major ticket transaction. Even when you are working, housing contributes like about 30, 40, sometimes some, some people 50, 60 percent of their earning sure. goes into their housing accommodation. Sure. Can I imagine when you are just living on your retirement benefits? Mm. If you have to be taking the whole chunk, sometimes but that one will be like about 90 percent. The chunk is not ever available again. Exactly, you know, to, to pay for. So you need to, one of the ways to plan for your retirement with housing is you need to plan to own a property before you retire. Very, very important. Own the property that you live in at retirement at least or that you will be using the rent to pay for uh, um, your housing accommodation. Yeah. That's one. Two, you want to probably go a step further. Okay. You understand? And say, ah, uh, okay, why should I not just aim for more. Now, probably you own your own house and you have not yet retired, so you think that that is covered. Can you do more? You're asking yourself, why not? Hmm. You can then go ahead, if you can afford it, to continue to own more properties. Okay. You At that point, you are deciding whether it should be residential or it should be commercial. I've spoken to a lot of people, particularly retirees, who have residential properties and a lot of them they would almost swear that if they had known, they wouldn't have ventured into residential property owning or building the portfolio of residential properties. Why? Problem of tenants. Hmm. Tenants either not paying or, you know, spoiling the house and things like that. You know, every now and then issues of tenants. You see, the truth of the matter is that, yes, <laughs> there is no... Pain. I mean, there is no gain, gain without, without pain. pain. There is none. Okay? However, you can mitigate that issue. One of the ways you can mitigate the issue of uh, tenant problem is, one, decide first. Do you want to do residential property or you want to do commercial property? Some people what have, is the difference? I think, Abby? Okay, so what I'm saying is that instead of building houses for people to stay in and rent okay. and live in, do you want to build building shops? Okay. You know, you know, because some people have the notion like shopping that shopping malls, shopping, shopping malls or shops, you know, yeah. rows of shops and things like that. Because people tend to really, the truth of the matter is that people actually tend to be more conscious and more, um, they, they fulfill the contract on their commercial spaces hmm. more than, they take it more serious. More than they are residential. Sure. Reason is that that is where money comes, comes in. From. 
uh, for them. You know, it's easy to change your residential address. All you have to do is tell people, I've moved. Yes. There is nothing the place is fetching you. Mm -hmm. But you know, every business person knows that when you move from one location to the other, there is an amount of business that you lose. Some people still even put their placard there that we have of now course, relocated have now to... Because they are trying to reduce the number of business they lose as much as possible. Mm -hmm. There's an amount of business that you lose. Even if you move to a better place where you gain more businesses, yes. You still want but to retain that place, the old ones. There's an amount of business you lose. So a lot of people really try to ensure that they pay on their commercial properties. Okay. And they do better with their commercial properties than residential. So we want to choose between commercial and residential property that way, okay? That's one way. Another way to mitigate it, and the best way is what I say. Hey, because you are retired and you have time on your hands, does not automatically mean that you know how to manage property. Mm. Yes, because what I found out is that a lot of retirees just feel that since they I have are, the time. They are to manage their property since what am I doing? <laughs> they say, I mean, what else am I doing? Why should I be paying somebody? It's beyond managing a property effectively. Is beyond just having time to do it. Time to go and shout on the tenants. Uh -huh. It's also about knowing, having the know-how. Hmm. So one of the ways you probably want to do that is if you know that, okay, you are going in this direction. Get training. Hmm. Get training. Get training so that you know exactly what to do. You can go online and look for training in real estate. Okay. You know, and get training to prepare yourself for that. Engineer Debody, let us realize, say, we need to plan to own a property before we retire. Say, they very essential. Then he say, another thing we were supposed to do, ask ourselves now, say, uh, say, you want to choose between commercial property to be residential property. You don't take in time to uh, define the two. You say the commercial one are the only people they live inside. You pay monthly to be yearly. Why the residential uh, the residential not the only people they live? Why the commercial not the one way person they place like shop, shopping malls, ETC. So you want to make us realize now, say uh, to say you get time self as a retiree. Uh, no means say you did certified to be even qualified to manage your property. So I thought all it needs or requires is just monitoring. Uh, not really. It goes beyond monitoring. So and that's where a lot of retirees get it wrong and they get their fingers burnt. You see, having a good tenant starts from the moments that they want to come in. Being able to scrutinize the type of person you are getting in right, terms of most landlords now have them. form they have form they just give you form right forget here. form oh. mm -hmm. if you don't know if you just have form is important but you see you need to know how to ensure that you are getting the right information on that form i hope you know there are a lot of quack agents out there they actually coach their prospects mm. they have somebody that they want to rent house for they will coach the person what to do based on what the landlord says he wants. Because, because they, they want quacks. to get the money. They are not subscribed to any ethics. For them, it's just their commission. Their commission. So they will sit down. Somebody that is, you know, some landlords also will say they want a particular people from a particular tribe. Some landlord will tell they you. They will tell the tenant to say it's from that <laughs> tribe. Tell the tenant to. Some, 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 some landlord will tell you that if you are not married as a lady, they won't give you house. And the agent will train the women, tell her your husband is in a broad. Exactly. They, they, even some have even developed, you know, some landlords also are skeptical with people saying their husband is abroad right now. But they will bring a guy. Hmm. Yes. He says maybe he just got transferred to Weary. Or they will even bring a guy during that interview Can't process. Imagine. When they now move in, eh? you will just see that the guy was there the day they are moving in. Eh? But after that, how far away is your husband? Ah, Eh, Ishek Belo, see. No worry. Ishek Belo, so yo. See Calabar. Uh, walk down, take and go, Bini. You know, mm. things like that. Meanwhile, the lady is not married, you know. So, you need to be trained. If you are not, that is really where their problem starts from. So, they get a bad tenant inside the house at Bini show. Once you've gotten a bad tenant, whether you have the whole time in the world, you just have time for trouble. That's all you have. <laughs> If the person will continue to give you trouble, it will be stress. Yes, it will be stress all the time the person will stay there. And so you need to learn how to. Then some tech, dumb landlords, actually, some um, retiree landlords, also, they get good tenants. But they are the ones that frustrate those tenants and make them to become bad, in quotes. How mm. do I mean? 
most retiree tenants that manage their properties, they don't know how to apportion and ensure that the property that they are getting money from is being taken care of. Hmm. They just collect all the money and they spend it on their, they don't take care of the property that is giving them the money. So they promise the tenants certain things when they are coming in, they don't deliver on those things. You as a, you as, you as a professional, sir, there are some things that happen in the house. And uh, where people say, let's go and meet landlord. Some people say, we better not go meet them for our own good. For instance, the issue of bow. So maybe bow will get issue. Some people believe, say, now nah, I ain't getting house, now nah, I ain't putting bow. He promised us water. Now nah, I ain't supposed to fix them. But when the landlord is not forthcoming, people go contribute, repair them. And the landlord goes still use them. But my question now is, if we look at it, sir, from the professional aspect, <laughs> whose duty? When you say the landlord goes still use them, that means you mean that they are living together with yes, the landlord. Yes, yes. Now, what is wrong with the bow? If it is pumping machine, for example, the pumping machine, yeah. from pumping machine, for example, and it has been as a result of use, normal use, it has stayed time, not that yes. it got spoiled or got damaged by whatever. Yeah, I mean, ordinarily the landlord is supposed to fix that. Mm. If it's as a result of yes. regular use, yes. and it's borrowed for the generality of people, mm. yes, the landlord is supposed to fix that. But it's a situation where, but you see, this is what we find these days. You buy a fake bowl, a uh, pumping pumpy machine. machine. So in no time, it has almost become a consumable. Yes. That's why it's looking like tenants you because they are the ones really pumping. They, they saw the beginning of the pumping machine and they, they are seeing the, the end. end in another one year or two. So and some landlord will tell you, hey, turn on me, see the air You know, some tenants exactly. will leave the water pumping for, for, for exactly. hours. Exactly, overflowing and things like that. But you see, there are only about three types of rents professionally. Okay. There is the rent you call full repair and insurance. Okay. Okay, so meaning that every repair and all of that will be taken care of. Okay. You understand? By it, uh, the rents. Do you get? So once you pay for that rent, okay. it is it covers everything. Repairs and all, full repairs. But there is the one that is just internal repairs. Okay. Meaning that, look, when you pay for this rental, you are going to take care of your internal repairs. Okay. There is the one that, whether it's, uh, um, I think there is the one that only insurance. Only you know, insurance. Yes, it's only insurance. So you are going to be responsible for the insurance. The landlord that you are paying to is going to be responsible for the insurance. Most most most, so most times are, these days now we hear of service apartment, service apartment. You even see people maybe traveling from Lagos to uh, coming to Lagos for just a week. They say they are looking for service apartments. Now it's fast becoming a trend. Service apartments are will are we going to class it under full repair and insurance or internal no, repair? No, 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 no. You see, so. When you rent for residential purpose, okay. okay, service apartment is simple. The only meaning is that all of the services you need has been provided. You understand? And I thought Whether that light, always very water, short. Water, light, water. No, 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 not necessarily oh. no service apartment. Short let. Don't mix short letting with yeah, service apartment. Okay. Service apartment simply means that the security is provided, light is pro uh, generator, that's uh, another source of light is provided, okay. cleaning, gen the common area is okay. provided, and all that. It's serviced. All the services are provided. You understand? Okay. And they are paid for by the people staying there. Sure. So somebody will run those services. Yeah. But short letting is that instead of taking a place for one year, for two years, for things like that, I'm taking it for one week, for one day, okay. for two months. Uh -huh. Those are short letting. Most of the time, for a lot of short lets the is furnished and equipped yes the apartments are funny it's almost like if you don't want an hotel you can go stay <laughs> you know, because in that kind of a short let you can probably cook for yourself and yeah. things like that but everything is provided the fridges there are tvs there you're just moving with your briefcase really mm -hmm. for the length of time you want to stay there okay so that is that is really it. so you need to get trained it's very important to get trained there are other i think we may probably have to continue this next there about other ways, I mean, you can look at when you are planning for your retirement with real estate. Yeah, so there are other ways you can definitely plan your retirement with real estate simply because uh, part of our goal now make we get old, and when we get old, make we no beg before we feel chop. Yes, make so. we feel see one or two thorough cover to take live a good life. Knowing full well, say, in the talk, say part of the basics now, food, 
clothes, shelter, and uh, health. So those things are very, very important. Uh, and they also talk about the three types of rent. Who will you get? Full repair and insurance. In me, because we say internal repair is there. And the last but not the least now, insurance, only insurance. So on top of that, I want to believe we've learned a lot today. To come your way again next week, Tuesday, have a fabulous week. And then don't forget, tomorrow, 5.30, total, 530, financial, total financial makeover. Yes, thank yes, you. Bye-bye. So.